Hello, in this video, we're going to discuss linear inequalities, specifically linear inequality word problems. So we're going to focus on transforming word questions into inequalities and then solving for a certain variable in that inequality. So in general, linear inequalities have a specific form. So we have usually a base number or a constant number that does not change. And then we have a rate of change, which is a value that we either increase or decrease by according to a certain variable. And then we have our minimum or maximum number, which we cannot exceed or we cannot have less than that number. And based on our questions, we can figure out how to write this equation and then solve for the variable of that equation. So let's do this example to figure out the concept. Then we can dive into SAT questions and solve them together. So in this example, a shipping company charges a base fee of $50. So this is what we're talking about, the base fee, plus an additional 2.5 per pound for shipping packages. So we have to, this is our rate of change, right? We have 2.5 per pound. We add 2.5 for every pound, right? And specifically, Mary wants to ship a package that, and she can only spend a maximum of $100. So whatever she pays to ship cannot exceed $100. So let's write the equation of that together. She has to pay the $50 regardless of how many pounds her package is, because that's the base fee. That's what we're talking about, the constant number. And then additionally, so we have to increase by 2.5 for each pound. So multiplied by the number of pounds. Since we don't know what that is, we can write that as x here, our variable. But say we had 1, that would be 1, point, 1 times 2.5, which is just 2.5. Say we had 2 pounds in our package, it would be 2 times 2.5. So we're increasing 2.5 for every single additional pound, right? So that's why we multiplied it here by x, depending on the number of pounds. So this is the price she has to pay if she had x pounds. But we want to make sure that this price does not exceed $100. So this whole thing needs to be less than or equal to, since the max is 100, less than or equal to $100. So whatever she pays, it cannot be more than 100 because that's the max. Now, since we have our equation set up, we can just solve for x. So we can just do that by taking 50 to the other side, leaving us with 2.5x being less than or equal to 100. Took it to the other side, so the side changes, right? It becomes negative 50. So that leaves us again with 2.5 on this side, being less than or equal to 100 minus 50 just leaves us with 50. Now to isolate x, we can divide by 2.5 to get rid of this. Same thing we have to do to the other sides, so 2.5 here. So x will be less than or equal to 50 divided by 2.5. Write that in your calculators and you will get 20. So Mary's package cannot be greater than 20 pounds. So x can be less than or equal to 20 pounds to stay within her budget of $100. So now we found the pounds and we also found the equation for Mary's situation. So in this example, they tell us there are currently about 2.4 million square miles of tropical rainforest, but most experts agree that about 125 square miles of tropical rainforest are being lost per day. If this rate of depletion continues, which of the following inequalities best describes the number of years from now, given with the variable y? when the rainforest will be depleted to 2 million square miles or less, assuming that one year is 365 days. So let's look at the numbers and remember our general form of the equation and figure out how to write it. So they told us 2.4 million square miles of tropical rainforest are there currently, but we agree that 125 square miles of tropical rainforest are being lost per day. So the rate of change is that we're decreasing by 125 for each day. But they told us that our variable is y, years. So it's not fair to say that we're decreasing by 125, right? This is 125y, because we're not losing 125 every year. We're losing 125 every day. So to do this, we can multiply 125 by 365 days to get the actual number we're losing every single year, every time we get 365 days. So if you plug this in your calculator, because it's a calculator question, we're going to get 45,625. We're losing this much rainforest per year. So now we can multiply it with our variable. So this is our rate of change. Obviously, we're decreasing because we're losing. This is the rate of change. And this is our base number. OK, and they told us we want to make sure that we know how many years it will take for us to have the rainforest be depleted by 2 million square miles or less. So let's write this together. So we said our base year, let's write that down first. That's 2.4 million, so multiply 2.4 by a million. We get this number. And we know our rate of change is decreasing by this 
value, so it's decreasing by 45,625 every single year, so we multiply by a variable y. We're gonna make sure this whole value is less than is 2 million or less. So this all has to be less or equal to 2 million. Well, I don't have much space, but you see the, the idea. So our equation has to follow this form. So now looking at the options, we can see that this matches option A. So this is our answer. So in this question, they tell us, Fernanda's driving 240 miles from Charlotte, North Carolina to Atlanta, Georgia. She's planning to drive straight through, except for one hour of time during which she will stop to refuel and eat lunch. Fernanda drives at an average speed faster than 45 miles per hour. If T represents the total number of hours, including the driving and stopping of Fernanda's trip, which of the following inequality is best models of the situation described above? So right off the bat, we can recognize that we're using distances, rates, time. This will remind us of the famous equation that you have to memorize going into the SAT because it's very important, which is distance is equal to rate of change times time. So say the rate of change is miles per hour, and then we have hours spent driving, that will give us the total distance covered. So in Fernanda's case, the rate isn't exactly 45 miles per hour, although you'd think so, but they said that it's faster than 45 miles per hour. So it's 45. So the rate would be greater than 45 miles per hour. And the time spent driving, you'd say, okay, they told us T, T represents her trip, but she wasn't using the whole time of her trip to actually cover distance. And this T can only include the time spent covering distance. So the t will be equal to the trip minus that one hour where she stopped to rest. So that's the actual time that she covered distance in. So to put this together, we can say 45 miles per hour times the time spent, which is t minus one. However, it was faster than 45, right? So the distance is actually greater than this number. And since they told us the distance driven was 240 miles, we can just write that here in place of the distance. So 240 is greater than 45 times t minus 1. And if we look at the options over here, this matches option number D. Or sorry, <laughs> option letter D. So this is our answer. So in this question, they tell us an audiologist is testing a patient to determine the softest sound of a specific frequency that the patient reports hearing. She begins with a 10 decibel sound for trial 1, then increases the volume by 2 decibels for each trial after that. If the patient can only hear sounds of that frequency that have a volume louder than 26 decibels, and T represents the trial number that the patients can hear, which of the following inequalities best model of the situation described above? So we know our base value of decibels tested is 10, right? And then she increases two decibels for every trial after the first one that she tested 10 in. And we wanna make sure that this number that we find is louder than 26, because that's the minimum that a person can hear. They said, the frequency has to be louder than 26 decibels. How can we write this equation? So we start with our base number. It's constant, it's 10. That's what she tests in the first trial, right? And then we add two decibels for every trial after that. So every trial after the first one. So we can't directly multiply two by t, the number of trials, because we're not increasing to every trial. We're increasing by two every trial after the first, where we tested for 10 decibels. So it would be 2 times t minus 1, minus that first trial. That's when we start adding by 2. So you always have to make sure that this, is, this rate is multiplied by the correct number of times. So here it's after the first trial. And we know that this whole number of decibels has to be at like more than 26, because they told us the volume a patient can hear is louder than 26. So we can write that by saying that this value is greater than 26 decibels. So if we look at the options, we see that this matches option D. So this is our answer. In this question, they tell us Michael has a summer project in which he must complete at least 35 hours of community service at a city park. Each day that he goes to the park, he volunteers for seven hours. It takes him 1.5 hours to walk to the park each way which also counts towards his community service hours. Which of the following inequalities can be used to find the number of days, D, Michael must volunteer at the park to complete his summer project? So how much does he work per day? That is our rate, right? That's the rate of hours he does per day. So we know that it's seven 
hours that he volunteers in the park, but it's also his commute to the park, which is 1.5 going and 1.5 coming, right? They said each way. So that would be 7 plus the 1.5 going times 2 for the one going back, or we can just say plus the 1.5 coming back. So this is the total number of hours he spends towards his volunteering every day, right? So this will give us 7 plus 1.5 plus 1.5. It'll give us 10. So he completes 10 hours every single day. So we can multiply that by the variable, right? So this is the rate of change every single day. So this rate must allow him, like how many days can, this, can he do in this rate to make sure that he gets at least 35 hours? So this must be at least 35. So greater than or equal to 35 because the minimum number is 35. He can do greater than that. That's fine. So this is the inequality that he has to complete. So if we look at our options, that matches option D again. So this is our answer. Here they tell us Janelle and Pedro decide to ride their bicycles along the same nine mile route from school to the mall. Janelle's speed is 10 miles per hour and Pedro's speed is eight miles per hour. If Pedro leaves five minutes before Janelle, which of the following inequalities best describes the time T in hours from Pedro's starting time, that Janelle is closer to the mall than Pedro. So again, we're looking at rate of change, we're looking at time, distance is covered. So we're gonna use our famous distance equation. Distance is equal to rate times time. And here they, wanted us, they want us to find when Janelle is closer to the mall than Pedro. That means the distance covered by Janelle has to be greater than that of Pedro's because she's closer. But they told us that the time, the variable t, is measured from Pedro's starting time. And we know that Pedro starts five minutes before Janelle. So in order to write the rate of change in time for Janelle and rate of change in time for Pedro, we must make sure we're using the correct rate and the correct time for each person. So since we're using the time for Pedro, we can keep time as is. And his rate is what? Eight miles per hour. So rate is eight and T is the same variable because that's the variable we're using. We're using Pedro's starting time. But for Janelle, she starts five minutes after him, right? Because Pedro started before her by five minutes. So her time has to be excluding the five minutes Pedro has because we're using the variable of Pedro's time. So her T, let's write this in a fancy T, not that it shows much, but her time is going to be equal to Pedro's time minus the five minutes that she didn't actually get to cover distance when Pedro was covering distance. So minus the five minutes. But since time here is measured in hours, what's five minutes over 60 minutes, one over 12. That's the number of hours. So to make sure it's just in the same unit, we do five over 60, five minutes over 60 minutes to get the hours, one over 12 hours. So this is the time Janelle is actually spending. So this is her time, we calculated it. And her rate of change they told us is 10 miles per hour, right? With Pedro, Pedro's being eight. So now that we have all our variables and we have our inequality, we can just plug them in to make sure we get the full statement. So Janelle, rate of change, 10. Time is t minus the time that Pedro had. So t, sorry, Pedro's time minus that extra time, minus 1 over 12, right? And this is greater because she's closer to the mall than Pedro is. Pedro's distance is his rate, which is 8 miles per hour, times his time, which we already are using it page of time so we can just put the unit as is so this is the inequality we are dealing with and if we match this to our options we find that this is option c that's our answer so for this question they tell us morgan opens a saving account that earns simple interest at the rate of 4.5 annually if she deposits 50 in her account what is the minimum number of years it will take her savings to be at least 68 dollars assuming she makes no other deposits or withdrawals. So we have our base number. She has initially $50 in her account, and that number increases by 4.5% annually. And we want to make sure that this number in her bank is at least $68. So we can write this down. We have our base number, constant, 50, that she initially puts in, plus how much it increases by. It increases by 4.5% of the initial value, 4.5% of 50. So what is 4.5%? 4.5% is the same as saying per 100, because cent is the same as 100. So that would be 4.5 per, meaning divided by 100. This gives us a value of 0 0.045.
So this multiplied by whatever she has is the number it increases by. It increases by 4.5% of 50. So it would be 50 times 4.5%, which is the same as this value, 0 0.045. Plug this in your calculator and we get that it increases by $2.25 per year. Every year it increases by this amount. This is 4.5% of 50. So we have our base number and then we have our rate of change, $2.25 every single year. And we wanna make sure that this whole value is at least 68. So it has to be greater than or equal to at least 68. So let's write this neatly so we can solve for y to find the answer. So this is our equation, now we can just start solving, take 50 to the other side, leaves us with 2.25y, greater than or equal to 60 minus 50, because we took it to the other side, right? So that is 18, and we want to isolate y, so we divide by 2.25, 2.25, leaves us with y being greater than or equal to 18 divided by 2.25, which will give us 8. So she needs a minimum of 8 years or more to get 60 above 68 right we want her savings to be at least 68 so the minimum number of years is going to be eight that's our answer and for our last question they tell us lila is buying her friend roses for her birthday she has 25 dollars to spend and wants to save at least 1.5 for a card if roses are two dollars each what is the maximum number of roses lila can purchase and still have enough money left to buy a card so she has 25 dollars right and She's going to spend 1.5 constant for her card, that's for sure, that's a fee on the side. And we want to say the rate of change is $2 for every rose she buys. So let's write that down. The constant that she's going to spend is the 1.5 for the card, right? And additionally, she's going to spend $2 for every single R, let's say is our variable, R rose that she buys. This whole value can't be more than 25 because that's what she has. At most, she can spend 25. So this has to be less than or equal to 25. Now that we have our equation, we can solve for r and find the number of rows. So we can take this to the other side, leaving us with 2r, less than or equal to 25, minus 1.5, leaving us with 2r being less than or equal to, in your calculator, this will give us 23.5, and then we divide by 2, divide by 2 to isolate r. So a number of roses it can be less than or equal to 23.5, divide by 2, 11.75. And we can't really buy 11.75 rows. We can't buy 0.75 of a rose. So at least she can buy 11, 11 roses.